Chances are that if you're watching this video, you're currently unable to travel as much as you'd like to due to lockdown restrictions. However, with the winter holidays fast approaching, many of us will be hoping to visit family or get away for a few days. And if like me, you've barely left your home for the last nine months, you're probably itching to get away as soon as possible. Because of this, I want to make my next trip the best it possibly can be. I want less chaos, less stress and less stuff without any compromise. So I thought I'd share my holiday packing list with you guys, along with some minimalist travel insights that I've gleaned over the years, which should be useful for when travel restrictions are finally lifted. I believe the main goal when planning for travel is to be as light and as versatile as possible, so you can quickly adapt to new environments and exciting opportunities along the way. Besides it being cheaper, I always try to avoid check-in luggage where I can and always opt for a backpack instead of a suitcase. I'm not bougie and I'm in good health, so if you're okay with the weight, they're a far better choice for when using stairs, buses and uneven sidewalks. However, if you're going to travel like this, you need a decent backpack, which is why I'm using this one from Pact. For the past several years, I've used the North Face duffel with the backpack straps, which was great, but it was unnecessarily heavy and the lack of back support combined with the cavernous main compartment makes for a really inefficient and uncomfortable experience. So I'd been keeping an eye on Pact ever since discovering them through the documentary Minimalism. So obviously, as you'd expect aesthetically from a minimalist backpack, it's all black, no logos, clean lines. However, functionally, it opens up like a suitcase, which makes packing and unpacking super easy, which is great. And then on either side, you have two compartments, which then open up like so. Obviously, the first thing you're gonna be bringing with you is the clothes on your back, which is usually just a t-shirt and a pair of drawstring chinos, which, by the way, are super comfortable, especially for plane travel. And I've found that they work for pretty much any occasion. So yeah, they've kind of changed my life. And then if where I'm going is going to be a little bit cold, I'll just wear my black hoodie layered with a bomber jacket over the top. Then I've got all of my clothes in these two little travel cubes which stop things flying around loosely in the bag and make your clothes easy to take out when you get to your destination. So I've got seven pairs of underwear and socks in here, along with seven t-shirts, a casual shirt, jumper or sweater for my non-British viewers, as well as a pair of tracksuit bottoms, jeans or swim shorts depending on where I'm going or what I'm doing. I might also tuck in a belt here as well, as well as a little laundry bag that came with the travel cubes. This compartment is great for clothes as it's netted, which means that you get reduced weight and ventilation, and also means it provides some protection to anything on the other side of the bag, as it's located on the unpadded side of the backpack. Over on the other side, I'll throw in my electric toothbrush and shaver, a raincoat and mini umbrella, depending on the location or time of year, and another pair of smart or casual shoes, depending on what I'll be doing when I'm there. I'll also bring with me an AeroPress and some pre-ground coffee. This is because we love our coffee and this ensures that we're guaranteed to get it without being overcharged or disappointed at our destination. Also, as my whole life now revolves around photo and video, I'll be bringing my camera, which you can't see right now because I'm using it to film this video, but it's a now ancient Sony a7, which almost permanently has the Tamron 28-70 2.8 lens glued to it. And I'll carry it in this padded camera cube, which will also hold my camera charger and spare batteries. I'll also squeeze in here my laptop charger if I'm bringing my laptop, and sometimes a mouse if I think I'll be doing a lot of editing. Of course, we'll be bringing our travel adapter too, which is now our main charger at home as well, because it has so many USB ports. And finally, this amazing packable backpack that we got from Nature Hike. This is great as it folds down to be absolutely tiny. And even though this packed travel bag can fulfill basically everything you need when you're away, sometimes you just want something that's light and that can hold your jacket or any bits and pieces that you buy when you're out, like food and water. So when this happens, you can just throw this in your jacket pocket and it comes in super handy in case you end up with any overflow when you're traveling. This then closes up and I'll throw in my headphones here and a laptop in the laptop sleeve. This works so well because in this location, it's really protected. And once the bag is closed up, you can still access the middle section like a usual bag and you can quickly grab anything you need. For quick access at the front, I'll throw in our power bank just in case we need some power on the go. 
I made sure to go for the one that charges via USB-C, so now I only need one type of cable to charge all of my other batteries too, which is absolutely amazing. That's every battery except my phone, because of course Apple only pretends to be concerned about e-waste when they can make a little bit of money, so I still need a lightning cable too. And then of course a pen for customs or whatever else, because you never know. Then there's a bottom pocket here too, which I'll get to later, as well as this waterproof pocket up here. I've definitely experienced toiletries leaking all over my bag, so this is super handy to have, and it's absolutely perfect for going through airport security, as you can just throw your flimsy liquids bag here instead of risking it in the main compartment. Over on the back, you've also got this hidden pocket that then has a super secure pocket within a pocket, which is perfect for throwing loose items inside at airport security, and as a place to keep your passport, plane ticket, and any local money that you might have, which is great as it's out of reach for pickpockets due to it being pressed up against your back. You also have a slot here to slide the bag over a telescopic suitcase handle if you're bringing along check-in luggage, and another secret slot behind the padding with another secret zipped pocket, which you probably wouldn't even notice even if you stole the bag. What this compartment really allows you to do though is actually hide away the backpack straps and essentially turn it into a kind of briefcase. And I honestly think that you could probably get away with using this as one if you needed to in a pinch. However, chances are that you're probably going to be using this for travel, and if it's loaded up, it's going to be heavy. So you have a sternum strap that works with either your left or right hand, which is cool, and you have a detachable waist strap, which is what I keep in the bag's bottom pocket. Now the reason I do this is because the waist strap actually functions as a whole other bag, which is super handy if you just need to carry around a water bottle or any other personal items you have when you're out and about at your destination for the day. If not, you can just leave it attached for the additional support, which essentially turns the bag into a hiking pack. Of course, you also get a gusseted water bottle slot, which sits flush against the bag, so you barely even notice it, as well as some accessory straps, which I'll use to attach my trusty Manfrotto compact tripod, which is also actually small enough to fit inside the bag's main compartment, in case Ryanair ever get on your case about it. And that is basically everything. Dare I say it, this bag from Pact may actually be perfect, and I personally wish that we'd had these in our lives way sooner. If you're interested in the Pact travel backpack or anything else that I've shown in this video, I've put all of the links down in the description as usual, as well as my packing checklist, which you can feel free to modify or copy onto your phone for your own trips if you want to. Finally, I just want to say a massive thank you to the PAX team for sponsoring this video and hooking us up with these bags, as I know for sure that they are going to get a ton of use from Nisha and I in the years to come. And of course, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.